Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining me on this beautiful October afternoon. The purpose of this video is to take a look at my angricoids and see how they are doing. By angricoids, I mean orchids like angricum and aeranges, which are the genera I own so far. But there are so many more genera in this group. They are a beautiful group of orchids spread across Central Africa, but mainly in Madagascar and other Indian Ocean islands. The so-called angricoids come in different sizes, from very large orchid to miniatures, but most of them have the night-scented whitish flowers in common. These flowers are star-shaped and very graceful and wonderfully fragrant. These flowers produce very long spurs with nectar at the bottom, which provides food to their pollinators, which are night moths. I only have three angrecum plus one oranges so far. Two of the angrecum are over there. There's another one here. And also my little oranges over there. This is where they are living at present moment. But they are black litten, so I'm bringing them down so that you can see them better. This one is Angrecum sesquipedale, a very showy species when reaching mature size. Very impressive <laughs> size. Because uh, mostly it has this very beautiful large bloom with the, the very long uh, spur. It's quite a large plant, but um, this is the variety Bosri, which as far as I understand is a smaller variety of the species. I bought uh, this one as a seedling 18 months ago and it has grown quite a lot. I keep it outdoors during summer but this is a warm grower and so I'll have to take it indoor once it gets cold. And Grecum sesquipedale is often called the Darwin's orchid and um, is the best renowned species in the genus mostly because of its relationship between its massive flowers and their co-evolved moth pollinator. The pollinator of this species is a specific moth with a very long proboscis, which is a long, a sort of a long tongue, long enough to be able to reach the bottom of the spur where the sweet nectar is produced and which the moths are looking for. If you don't know why I am mentioning Darwin here and what am I talking about, I invite you to watch another video in which I uh, explain all about it. You will find the link in the description. But also, I will leave you the link to a video showing Darwin's moth in action, so to speak. The second angrecum I bought was this one. This is the species Equitans, which occurs naturally in the mountains of Madagascar at high elevations, around 2,000 meters high. It is a miniature and a slow grower. Hopefully in time it will branch from below. Living at high altitudes, this is a cool to cold growing epiphyte. In need of high humidity, in its natural habitat it grows in lichen forests on tree branches, covered with mosses and lichens. I grow it outdoors all year round, watering freely during summer, but a lot less during winter. I have no idea how long it will take to bloom in size. I hope it's not far from that. It's quite a charming plant, it has been easy to maintain so far. It is potted in cocoa chips. My third angrecum here is uh, angrecum vichii. I bought it early this year, in March. This is a primary hybrid, as it is a hybrid between two species. This is a big fellow, just like sesquipedal here, which is one of its parents. The other parent is the species Eburnio, which I don't have. But not only that, 
Both the Angrecum sesquipedale and Veitchi do not like their roots messed with. Reason why I did not use small pots, although they were small plants when I got them, it's best to put a younger Angrecum, even a seedling, into a pot that can house it as an adult, especially if we are talking about large Angrecum species. I started them in large pots that will be able to accommodate them for several years. However, the substrate they are potted in has very good drainage to give the root system a better opportunity to breathe and air out. Although able also to hold enough moisture for the roots to absorb it. In these pots I used cocoa chips evenly mixed with aquarium stones and small brick pieces. This last one is a Ranger's Misty CDI. It was imported from Afri orchids in South Africa a little over one year ago. There are two varieties of this species, Ranger's Misty CDI, one with larger flowers that is native to South Africa. And another one with smaller flowers, but with more, with a larger number of flowers which is this one. I only am not sure if the South African variety with larger flowers also has larger leaves than this one, or if they are the same. This is quite a small plant, and one thing I know about it is that it is very sensitive to environmental changes and heat. As a consequence, it suffered severe damage with heat on transport from the nursery in South Africa to Germany and then from Germany to Portugal. When I got it, I ended up with only one viable leaf and uh, two others that um, I had uh, to cut by half due to heat damage. One of those dropped in the meantime, so only one and half leaves remain of the plant I received one year ago. In the meantime, she grew these four leaves. The last two are still growing, but I feel this plant is still adapting. I keep it away from direct sun under this porch at the shadiest spot, but even so, the leaves show signs of too much light. I was hoping it would adapt, but I may have to find her a darker place or take, uh, take it indoors during the brightest time of the year, which is summer. She is also growing good roots. The older roots that came with the plant are inside the basket, which is filled in with cocoa chips topped with aquarium stones. The new roots decided to grow aerial, which does not surprise me and uh, does not worry me either, as, as uh, this is the way the roots of this species like to grow on top of the medium, not in the medium. The thing is, is that in their native habitats, they usually grow overhanging from small twigs. It came mounted, but uh, it was so dehydrated that at first I could not cope with hydrating her. And so I decided to place this plant in this basket. And um, she seems to love it. The cocoa chips in the pot under the, the, the plant being moist at all times seem to be providing enough humidity for the roots growing across the surface of the pot. Uh, they look beautiful with uh, this greenish silvery sheen, even when they are dry like now. As I said, I'm growing it outdoors all year round. It coped very well during last winter and it never stopped growing. So she's staying out during next winter too. Apparently, it is the summer she does resent outdoors, not the cool of the winter. That's what her leaves tell me anyway. Although my summers are never very hot and uh, at some degree they are humid, they are still very bright. This plant may be better indoors during summer and it will be a bit cooler too. These are very charming species and um, there are so many more among the angrecoids. I hope to buy more in the future, but uh, this is all I have to show you now. I hope you have enjoyed it anyway. 
If you did, maybe you would like to watch some more. I'm leaving you a card at the end of the video. And do not forget the links I left you in the description. Thank you so very much for being here. I really appreciate it. Take care and I'll be seeing you very soon.